Welcome to The Connection Codes, the podcast where we break open our emotions that take us from being disconnected to connected with ourselves and in our relationships. I am your host, Tierra Wages, and I'm so excited to be here with Dr. Glenn Hill, marriage and family therapist, clinical sexologist, and his incredible wife, Phyllis Hill, um, where they just share every week how to live a connected life um, and relationship. And so today we are going to be talking specifically about emotions. We hear that people say, well, I don't want to remember the bad emotion at the end of the day. You want me to do this core emotion, Will, but I don't want to remember when I felt sad today. And, Mm. you know, seven of those emotions are bad. You know, there's Mm. only one good one. So why would I want to do that? So today we are going to be talking about the fact that actually no emotion is bad and what emotions are here to serve. So thank you all for joining us. Hello. Yes. Hello, world. Thank Hi, you, Tira. friends. Thank you. Wow. As soon as I'm hearing you, Tira, I'm thinking that, you know, I lived decades of my life saying uh, I don't do emotion and right. Glenn has enough emotion for both of us. So, uh, you know, for me personally, Connection Codes has changed everything. Just the understanding the science of the brain, understanding um, just how this all functions. I've become really, really curious for like, who am I? (laughs) What's happening Mm. for me? I think I'm asking myself that on a daily basis. Mm. What is happening for me? And tuning in and to realize that, wow, my brain houses emotion and they serve as a messenger and I want to know what the message is and I want to tune into that. So I, I get it that people really, they see the core motion wheel and they see that uh, they always say, oh, well, joy is the only positive emotion and mm-hmm. all the rest are negative. And yeah, it's a it's a message. It's a message that we've received most of our life that right. we kind of judge our own emotion. Yeah, and I always like to point out when you mentioned that, you know, that oh, Glenn had enough emotion for us both. I looked like the emotional mm, one, and, right. and Phyllis was just the task focused, incredibly productive uh, person. Uh, but I was just as clueless as she was. She thought mm. that she had simply opted out of emotion. Uh, I thought that I was just kind of overrun and and specializing in emotion. But I was just as clueless as she was because I didn't know what was happening mm. with me. And that's part of the power of the connection codes. Part of the power of the connection core emotion wheel is that for somebody like Phyllis, it helps her to realize, oh, okay, this is just what's happening in my brain. It's brain chemistry true for every human on the planet. Therefore, it's true for me. But it helps somebody like me who is all over the map. Mm. Uh, I wasn't the life of the party. I was the party. I I was just, uh, (laughs) for one thing, I'm not only funny, I'm very funny. Oh, yes, absolutely. Convincing Phyllis of that. But um, so I look like I was emotional, but I really had no idea. Mm. I was completely out of touch with what was happening for me so the core emotion will for me helps bring it down mm. there's just eight core emotions and i thought i had you know 3604 of them mm. and was just constantly bouncing off the walls and it helped bring it down and of course for phyllis poor thing is trying to listen to all 3000 of my emotions and mm. she was just lost and overrun all the time and the core emotion will helps him bring it down uh, to just the eight which is true for every human on the planet it's true for her uh, and we now have research that says whenever I convey my fear to her, it actually activates the fear region of her brain, typically at a lower level than mine. But that's why emotion mm. is so connecting, wow. uh, because it's a uh, shared experience and it connects us and she gets it. And every human on the planet gets it. Every human gets fear. Every human gets shame. We, we all know what that means. And so when we share those authentically, uh, it connects us. So back to the issue at hand, as far as all of the emotions being negative, except for one, you know, as connection coders, we just say that emotions are emotions. Oxygen mm. is just oxygen. You don't walk in the room and go, I, w- I want to find the good oxygen. You know, I want to avoid the bad oxygen. Mm. Well, oxygen is just oxygen. We breathe, mm. we inhale, we exhale. Emotion is simply emotion. And if you actually break it down and think it through, uh, especially once you recognize that the emotions are our consultants, they're trying to give us a message, they're trying to communicate something to us that's going to help protect us, going to help guide us and help us become the best versions of ourselves. So, for example, fear uh, is protecting you. 
Mm. Uh, if you're on the interstate doing 84 miles an hour, uh, it's not those dotted white lines that keep the uh, person in the lane beside you out of your lane. It's fear. Well, good. I'm glad he's feeling fear. So again, we don't call it good or bad, but I guess in that situation, fear is accomplishing something good. It's accomplishing its purpose and it's letting you know and the person beside you know, yeah, you need to stay in your lane. You can go right over those dotted white lines. That's not going to stop you but it's fear that cues you in. Uh, You're allowed to jump out of an airplane, but I hope you feel fear because if you don't feel fear and jumping out of an airplane, you just jump out of an airplane and you get about halfway down to the ground and you go, the dirt's approaching Mm -hmm. rapidly. Oh, I forgot about a parachute because you didn't pay attention to fear. Fear Mm -hmm. is trying to give you a message. Danger, beware. There's a risk of harm. Uh, That's the message of fear. And so then you want to say, oh, well, what should I do? What do I need to do next? What do I need? Go, oh, well, I need one of those parachute things. I not only have one, but I have it strapped to my body. Uh, It needs to be a functioning parachute and I need to know how to work it. And when you do that, well, that keeps you in joy. And that's why on the core emotion wheel, joy is in the middle because these other emotions help keep us mm. in joy. And that's what everybody wants. You know, nobody gets up in the morning and says, I, I hope I have a shame filled day. My, mm. my dream for today is just to be flooded with shame all day. Well, no, nobody wants that. Uh, but shame is actually helping you to stay in joy. Fear is protecting you so that you stay uh, in joy. You know, uh- I think we also get into conversations with people where we need to realize that you you may be defining some of these words in a way that is not helpful mm. to you. I know for me, yeah. um, the first time we talked about fear, I was so resistant to that. Mm. You know, I remember saying to you, I remember that conversation. Uh, you yeah. were not very polite. No, I was it? not. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I would say to you, so you would say something about fear and mm. I would respond, I am not afraid of anything. Mm. Mm. Yep. And even the way I took that one word fear and I turned it into the word afraid yep. and, and what I was defining was, well, I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid to be home alone. I'm not afraid to speak publicly in front of a large crowd of people mm. And so that for me was just how I defined it. Yeah. And then when you broke it down for me very gently, thank you. Mm. Um, well, I'm not claiming I presented it well. Well, <laughs> you did have. actually, you uh, really did. I, I just was so resistant mm. to even consider, yeah. um, almost like I took great pride in the fact that I had no fear. Yeah, I remember you being kind of offended that yeah. I would suggest that you had yeah. fear. Yeah. Mm. And, and then, of course, I didn't understand the science. I didn't understand that my mm. brain housed emotion. I didn't right. understand that these were messengers. These were my guides. Mm. So when I really started understanding the science, I got actually, and I still to this day, I love the science because I love to know this is how my body functions. And the curiosity for me is like, oh, man, I want to know who I am. Mm. I want to know the messenger that's in my own body. Mm. I want to listen. And I resisted that most of my life. Like I, I don't tune in very well. Mm. I will push myself beyond a healthy place. Um, and my body will be screaming at me that it Mm. needs me to slow down or it needs me to tune in. It needs me to, you know, rest. And I'm really bad at not tuning in. But specifically with with defining, so, you know, as you're listening today, you may be thinking very quickly as you hear these emotions, you go, yeah, well, you know, anger, definitely. I mean, that's the first one. I mm. just, you know, I feel angry about a lot of stuff. And that's my first one that I go to. Well, that may be the easiest for you or the most comfortable or kind of your home base. But your body is, if you were hooked up to a, a a brain scan, you would actually see that all of those emotions mm-hmm. fire for yeah. you. Um, and you, it may really help you to define them differently because once I was willing to, to really uh, understand and accept the science, then I was like, okay, so when does my brain fire mm. fear? And then I realized that, Oh my word, my brain fires fear actually stronger than any emotion mm. all day long. And at that time that all this realization came, I was a business owner and I realized that I started my day off 
with fear of what was coming at me, like fear of making a bad decision, fear of a client being unhappy, fear of losing a client, fear of losing workers and not having enough workers to do the work that I was contracted to do. And like, I could not believe it. I was almost in shock to realize that all day long, I'm actually experiencing fear, maybe a low grade of fear, but it was yeah. constant. Yeah. And so when I started tuning into that and I realized this is just a messenger, this is a messenger for me to be able to find it and verbalize it, which was the biggest change that I saw in my life for me to actually acknowledge the fear it, it really like, it made me a smarter version of right. myself. Mm, yeah. I dealt with customers better. Mm. I dealt with my workers better when I just tuned into my own fear. Um, and it, it was almost surprising to me that I was as successful as I was in mm. a, in a business setting because I made so many decisions really based on fear. Mm. And, you know, it, it was just like so surprising to me and, you know, and I think that, so if you are also one of those who goes through it, I know lonely is another one mm. where we may go, oh my word, I'd love to be by myself mm. for the weekend. Mm. I would love, I have, right. you know, kids all around me and <laughs> I could use a moment. I can't even go to the bathroom without one of them knocking on the door. And and yet loneliness need, you know, is not defined in just being uh, without other humans around. Right. Right. And that, you know, loneliness can so much be just feeling in this particular task all alone. Like no one is yeah. helping me. No one else is partnering with me. I'm having to do this by myself and I feel alone in that task. That falls under lonely. Yeah. 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 yeah feeling unconnected, unsupported. Uh, and I remember it being such a progression for you. Uh, incrementally that, you know, at first, again, you say I did maybe, I don't know, but I'm not sure that I presented it well. I was excited about the research, but I may not have uh, presented it well to you. But at first, you know, you were kind of offended. Uh, and then slowly you uh, began to uh, kind of begrudgingly go, well, maybe I'll consider it. And it's evolved over time. So now you're the lead investigator into Phyllis and you're excited about finding out you're curious. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm right there with you. You know, we're, we're partners in discovering you and discovering me and discovering us. Uh, and that's our quest is to get people to get curious about yourself, mm -hmm. what happens uh, for you. And I remember as that, um, I guess, eased for you so that you were able to go, OK, so, yeah, what, what is happening for me here? And that's the power of the three phrases. You know, so go to Amazon.com, get the extra large box of ooze, a smaller box of what happens, a little box if I missed it. So you have enough left over for yourself mm. so that literally throughout your day you can go, oh, what's, what's happening with me? What am I missing? Oh, OK. I'm feeling some loneliness. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm feeling some some fear. I'm feeling some shame or whatever's happening for you uh, in that moment. And that's, I think, so much of what has enriched our relationship uh, these last few years is just we're excited about just discovering ourselves and, and seeing what's happening. Uh, and I, I marvel uh, at what happens for me, what happens for you. Uh, and, and we've depathologized emotion so much, I think, culturally for centuries. You know, we've said emotion is weakness. Emotion mm -hmm. is bad. I mean, I was raised that emotion was from Satan. Uh, and so I just knew that emotion was, was evil. I can remember Bible verses being read when I was a kid. And I thought, that's just bad Bible. Of course, it was many years mm -hmm. later before I was like, wait, that is Bible. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was bad Bible because it mm -hmm. had an emotion in it. Um, so now as we realize that, no, emotion is just part, just like oxygen. There's no, there's not bad oxygen. There's just oxygen. There's not bad emotion. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I want to mention about that is just that, you know, people say, oh, well, how come joy is the only positive emotion? Well, again, em emotion is just emotion. It's got, mm -hmm. not good or bad because joy can be incredibly unprocessed. Joy can be incredibly damaging. Uh, people overeat because of joy. Right. Uh, I know that's true for me. It's so I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to have three servings of that item. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just feeling so much joy about the idea of it. Uh, of course, I think we've shared about my popcorn uh, mm, obsession yeah. in the past. I don't want to call it an addiction. It was close. <laughs> um, and it's stunning to me. That's been, I've lost tracks five, six, seven months ago, and I haven't binged on popcorn since. And I'm like, that's that was too, I don't like saying easy, but that was too simple. I'm startled that that's a thing. And, I, and we've been to the theater so many times since then, 
And I'm just marveling at watching myself as a case study going, well, how can this be? Mm-hmm. All I did is process the joy about, you know, just gorging on popcorn. Right. And I haven't done it since. So, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not saying everything's that easy. But, uh, but also things like cocaine addiction actually come from unprocessed joy. And what happens biochemically is that the reuptake uh, to, of the dopamine in the brain is blocked by cocaine usage. And so the person experiences a euphoric sensation, which is joy. Mm. And it feels so good that then they're like, well, that felt good. I think I'll do it again and again and again and again. And now they're a cocaine addict. So mm. if you say that joy is a positive, then you have to support cocaine addiction because that's what's happening. It's the repeated unprocessed joy. Uh, that actually leads uh, to cocaine addiction. And again, all of us have done, we've overspent, we've under-exercised, binged, watched, whatever. We've all made poor decisions, some life-changing, life-altering, life-threatening uh, decisions based on unprocessed joy. Right. You know, when I think about that, just the, you even saying that if we would process joy and we would see mm. that a lot of us, especially if we were raised in, in a... Uh, you know, conservative uh, religious way where there was a judgment on emotion Mm. where it was like, we're, we are allowed joy Mm. and joy is good and everything else is bad. Mm. I I mean, I think about that. What does joy push us to? Mm. So if I've been raised believing that joy is the only emotion that is, that is good, Mm. then I I lean towards joy, which means if I open the fridge because I'm allowed joy and I feel joy when I go for that whole, you know, container of ice cream Mm. and then joy says to me, oh, ice cream, joy. So I'm going to eat the whole container because I'm allowed joy Mm. and then I eat the whole thing. And then so often what follows it Mm. is guilt and shame that I have just eaten a whole carton of ice cream. Mm. And and it's this almost vicious cycle right. because guilt and shame mm. leads me down the way I was raised. Guilt and shame leads me to hell. Like mm. guilt is associated with hell is the way I was raised. And so then I want to find joy again. Mm. So then I cycle back around mm-hmm. to going after wow. things that bring joy. Now, maybe I will go, eh, I'm not going to do a carton of ice cream, but I'm going to go to the mall mm. and I'm just going to go shopping because I want wow. that joy and I'm allowed right. joy. I'm allowed right. joy. Mm. And and that is, I think if we ever broke it down that simply for some of us, it would be shocking and we would go, oh my word. Right. We took what, you know, the messenger out of it because we labeled. And I know that even just in the last week, we were speaking um, to a group of missionaries and we were teaching the core motion wheel. Mm. And one of them at the end, we took questions. And the the question was, um, the scriptures are very clear that um, fear not. And, Mm. and, you know, that it's mentioned hundreds of times in scripture, fear not. So I know for those who are believers there, there is a lot of messaging Mm. that judges a certain emotion. And I know I was raised uh, with that for sure. So can you elaborate on how to explain that to the, our listeners who are going exactly we fear not is very, very clear in scripture. Yeah. Yeah. And in that meeting, uh, and this is a group of very, very powerful uh, individuals um, who uh, love God deeply. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of them are in um, what we'd call third world countries. I mean, they're, they're not just Kush uh, missionaries in Hawaii on the beach <laughs> or something. I mean, some of them are in really, really intense situations. So I just say that because <clears throat> these are not just Kush people. These are really, really powerful people. But so he shared that, and I believe from a very good uh, heart, and whenever he said it, that, you know, the scriptures say 365 times, uh, do not fear. Uh, I said, actually, scripture doesn't teach that. And he said, yes, it does right here. And he grabbed his Bible and um, I said, well, what does it say in the Greek, and, which is the language that the New Testament was written in? And he said, well, I don't know. I said, it would be worth checking it out in both the Greek and the Hebrew, the language of what we call the Old Testament uh, because a better transliteration of the passage would be something to the effect of do not panic. And so mm. then we talked about it, and uh, and he was very receptive. And, and I said, you think about it. Let me pick an example. So 
uh, Gabriel appears to uh, Mary, who we think was probably mid-teens, 13, 14 years old. So based on the scriptural narrative, here's an angel of the Most High God appears to Mary, this little girl, and says to her, do not fear. Well, how dense do we have to believe that that's going to be effective? Really? Right. You're going to be fierce enough with a little girl to get her to not Fear that I mean I don't think anybody believes that that's actually possible mm. that we can uh, either command someone or yell at them fiercely enough that then they are not going to fear they're going to fear even more the more intense you get and what the Greek translation and transliteration would actually be in English is more like do not panic do not run away because mm. of the fear but we can't control the fear and it's just a bit silly really when you think it through to think. I'm going to be so fierce with this person. I'm going com to command them strongly enough. Then they won't feel fear. That's just not the human yeah. condition. That's not true uh, for anybody. Now, they can control their behavior and not run away. They right. may feel like running away. Right. And, of course, uh, the archangel Gabriel said, do not uh, panic. Do not uh, flee. Do not run away based on uh, the fear. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to say don't even have the fear. That's not even a human capability. Right. Well, for me, I, I think that's where the science steps in. Our mm. brain is firing fear. Yeah. So it's it's a it's kind of like to me, why would uh, for you that are faith based, why would God put fear in our brain yeah. firing and then say, don't right. let it fire in your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like, well, wait a minute, God, you put it in there as a messenger. It is firing. Mm. So I'm going to pay attention. Right. Like, I'm going to tune in and I'm going to be aware. Fire. I mean, fear is a be aware. Like, mm. there's danger, yeah, potential tune danger. Right. Tune in, be aware. Yeah. And I think that even in that, what you were just saying about Mary, I would say she was paying attention. Mm. And her brain is firing. Yeah. The reason I would say that even that scripture came to be mm. is that <laughs> it's kind of like acknowledging, of course, she was feeling fear. Yeah. And it was an acknowledgement of that. Like, I think any one of us would experience something like that, an experience none of us Absolutely. have had right. it, like she had. And, and I don't know, you know, we tried sometimes through picture books to draw a picture of mm. what that angel looks like and i think often we make it like cloud soft white beautiful <laughs> yep. and and i don't know i i you know i don't know what really that experience was like but i would say her brain was probably going pretty crazy mm -hmm. firing with fear and so it was acknowledged right. the acknowledgement is don't run away yeah. mm. stay right here yeah. with me you and need actually because of the fear uh, and again, based on the narrative, Gabriel has a clue. Yeah. So, of course, Mary's going to feel fear. Yeah. And because she's feeling fear, we say, do not panic. Don't run away. Don't flee. Right. I get it, girl. <laughs> You're getting yeah. hit with fear. Absolutely. But don't run away because of that. I just want to make sure we cover because, uh, uh, and again, our modern faith movement, so many of them are saying we need to get rid of fear. We need to get rid of uh, of pain, we need to get rid of guilt and, and shame. Uh, guilt and shame, in particular, are you know real hot topics for a lot of groups. Uh, and I just want to be the defender <laughs> of these because, again, it's just a human condition. Mm -hmm. uh, each of us has a disgust region of the brain. We divide guilt and shame up. They both fire in the disgust region. As far as I know, they look identical on the brain scan. We can't differentiate them, but they look so different, facial expression, uh, body language, and behavior, uh, they look distinctly different as if mm -hmm. you watch people when they're getting hit with guilt versus shame. Guilt is how we learn things mm -hmm. uh, for a child and an adult too, but you know, this first grader says uh, you know, to the teacher that five plus five is 55. Well, it looks like it should. Mm -hmm. You put one five, you add another five, you have five, five. Duh, that's obvious, it's 55. Well, then the teacher says to the child, oh, no, 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 five plus five is 10. Mm -hmm. the child gets hit with guilt. Good. As, as in, that's what fires in the child's yeah, brain. the child feels guilt. It's guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad. And again, we redefine it a little bit, but that's just it's just brain chemistry. That's wow. what's firing in the brain. I'm glad that child mm -hmm. got hit with guilt. If not, they grow up to be a horrible CPA, and they do your mm -hmm. taxes for you, and they go, you owe $3 million in uh, taxes. And you're like, I didn't even make that much. You're like, hey, I did the math. See, look, 9 plus 9 is 99, and 5 plus 5 is 55. Well, they never got hit with guilt. So right. they're dumb as a brick, and they're right. really bad CPAs and accountants, 
because they don't even know how to add because they mm. never got hit with guilt. So mm. I want them to get hit with guilt because that's how they learn. And that's just as true for adults. There are times that I miss things with you where I I just missed it. I mm. made a mistake. I was off base. I was off course with how I behaved with you. Uh, good. I get hit Mm. with guilt. I'm glad. I better. Because if not, I'm just going to repeat that mistake again and again and again. And I'm like, hey, I'm guilt free. Look at me, babe. I'm guilt free. And you're like, yeah, I noticed. Because you keep doing the same detrimental thing to our relationship over and over again. Shame typically is a little bit deeper. We we say that it's the most dangerous of the core emotions. Unprocessed shame becomes toxic. And when uh, shame hits, it's giving us a message of you presented yourself poorly. Mm-hmm. Well, there are times I need to get that message. Yeah. If I behave really poorly with you and I'm a bad version of Glenn, I'm a lesser version of Glenn, uh, I'm a, a detrimental, uh, I'm not really there for you like I need to be, good. Mm-hmm. I get hit with shame and I go, oh, wow, I really missed on that. I wasn't the best version of Glenn. I can mm-hmm. present myself better next time no i don't need to be drowning in shame for three months i'm going to process it instantly with you or my teammates whoever i'm with and that shame gives you the message hey dude you really were off base on that you presented a poor version of glenn uh let's give this a better shot next time yeah awesome glad i hit Mm. got hit with shame because now i'm going to be a better version of your husband uh, the next time and you'll be blessed by that. And of course, uh, have been, but again, if I'm shame free, that never happens for me. Uh, right. and I right. never get the message and I've seen a lot of faith-based people mm-hmm. it, it pains me greatly to say it, but I've seen a lot of faith-based people who are basically guilt and shame free. They have trained themselves mm-hmm. to be guilt and shame free. And in psychology, we say, uh, and in uh, society, a guilt and shame free person is a sociopath. Right. Uh, that's right. and I don't use those pathologizing terms with people, but that's what's happening. We're actually mm. pushing them towards sociopathy, so they don't even recognize their mistakes. They don't even mm. recognize where they miss things, and so they just keep repeating them uh, over and over again. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I think if we think of of these emotions as our messengers yep. and our yep. guides, mm-hmm. that is so huge. Mm. And and to realize that if we were hooked up on a brain scan and just read our own emotion, right. we would be probably for many of us quite amazed mm. at how throughout the day we experienced emotion, but we aren't tuning in. Many of us, like yeah. the way I was raised was definitely um, to not tune in. Mm. And so it was, it's like you just start to store yeah. and store yeah. and store the emotion, which yep. we know is so unhealthy for mm-hmm. our immune system. It's so unhealthy for our gut. Mm. And, it, and but sometimes our listeners will say um, it's almost like they think that we're supporting the idea that you just stay stuck mm. in an emotion. The opposite, yeah. Right. And it's like, no, no, no. We don't want you to be stuck in shame. Mm. We don't want you to be engulfed in it. We want you to actually verbalize, yeah. identify it, verbalize it, and and get it out of your system, yeah. you yeah. know, and not drown in it. So yeah. and glean the message from it. Yes. Go, okay, I got hit with shame. What's the message? And it can be incredibly fast. You know, I always say I probably get hit with shame just as much today as I did 30, minutes, 30 years ago. Uh, I just process it instantly. I process it in six seconds, eight seconds, 15 seconds. And so it doesn't have a stranglehold on me. It doesn't have talons in me. I just grab it. I, you know, I always think of it, me grabbing it by both shoulders. And I look it in the face. And I go, what are you trying to tell me here? Mm-hmm. And then if I can grow as a person, if I can improve, if I can evolve as an individual, great. Uh, and literally I've processed it in 15 seconds and then I'm rolling. Uh, mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean I'm not going to get hit with it again in 10 minutes or an hour or this afternoon or tomorrow. I don't care when I get hit with it again, I'm going to process it in 10 seconds, uh, learn what I can from it and uh, move on. Let me mention anger real quickly here too. Uh, and those of you that know the connection codes know the core motion wheel, uh, anger serves as, is unique on this list because it serves as both the primary and secondary anger. As far as I know, secondary anger is never connecting uh, mm. relationally. And we call it secondary because it's second. It happens second after a primary or a core emotion. And, and the secondary anger is built on top. Uh, of the core emotion. We want to always get underneath and find out what the core emotion was. But core level anger 
is incredibly connecting. Mm. Uh, core level anger is that driver. Core level anger is very, well, any anger, but especially core level anger is very epinephrine oriented, which is adrenaline, which drives us. It tells us to power up mm. and core level anger gets stuff done. And uh, to run a marathon, you're going to have to have some core level anger because at some point your body's going to go, whew, that was a workout. Let's head on home, get a <laughs> snack and a shower and take a nap. For me, that'd be about 200 yards. Um, for, for the marathon runner, they make it a lot further. But at some point, their body is going to get tired of running mm -hmm. and it's core level anger that drives them. But for me to be able to look at you and say, babe, oh my gosh, you know, you know, whatever the topic is, you know, to say we, we have really let our finances get out of control mm -hmm. and dang it, because of that, now we're in a mess mm -hmm. financially. Ugh, that stinks. Uh, we got to get better at this. How, babe, mm -hmm. how can we win uh, in this? Let, let's get on point this week. Let's get on target. Mm -hmm. And six months from now, we're going to be in a very different place financially. Well, that's core level anger that's driving me. And that's very connecting. And you're like, oh, whoa, you're you're mm -hmm. intense about this. I'm like, yeah, it pisses me off that we've worked so hard and, uh, you know, all this time and we're still broke. Mm -hmm. So let's get on. We de we deserve to be financially stable, uh, financially secure. So let's get on point and rock and roll with this. Good. I'm glad he feels anger mm -hmm. in that because that's what gets it done. That's what accomplishes what needs to be accomplished. I will say, though, with that example, the way you just said that, because you're not responsible for your emotion, but you are responsible for your reaction. Mm. And so typically the emotion, when we are feeling that core level angle, we, we don't say, oh, I'm mad at our finances. Oftentimes it's like you spent too much money. Mm. You know, we, we tend to blame at that mm. point. And so the reason it's connecting is because the two, you are wanting to team up and partner with her to conquer it together. And that makes all the difference in communicating. Yeah, and every human is unique, so it's difficult to know. But typically, in a situation like that, if somebody's saying, oh, you spend too much money, there's probably pain in it. That's probably the core emotion, core level emotion under it is a sad mm -hmm. scenario. There might be fear in it that, oh my gosh, you spend too much money. Now we're not going to have enough money to pay the mortgage this month or whatever. And again, every human's unique. It's difficult to know. But typically when I hear phrases like that, I always ask people in session every day, goes, what happened before the anger? And they're like, what? Uh, and it's a microsecond, so they may not even realize there was something before it. But once they break it down, they're like, oh, yeah, I felt fear right. because she spent that money. Now, I don't know if we're going to have enough money. To, I feel fear that we're not going to have enough money to pay the mortgage. Uh, so the anger may look like core level anger, but oftentimes it's actually secondary, right. which is not connecting. Right. So one of the things that I have thought as we were talking um, is... <laughs> Phyllis, I love that you gave the example about we we have permission to go towards joy. So mm -hmm. we go to the ice cream and then it breaks. We start that cycle of the oh. guilt. And then I'm so guilty of that specific cycle. Um, but on the flip side of that, because we've been so programmed to say joy is OK, the rest of these are bad. So you need to ignore them. Mm. We have learned to ignore them. And so how often we experience something and we're like, oh man, our my gut told me not to do this. Mm. I like I felt that this was gonna happen mm. and I ignored it. Well, your gut is more than likely some kind of emotion mm. trying to guide you yeah. that we've just gotten really, really good mm. at ignoring what that is. Mm. And that is the power of the connection codes is it teaches you what to listen to. Mm. It teaches oh. you like, okay, you need to pay attention to this. This mm. is what the emotion is. You can identify it more quickly because you've gotten the practice of doing this core emotion well yeah. every day. Yeah. And so now we get to listen to y'all show us what mm. this looks like. Yeah. Before we do that real quick, yes. I want to say, and I know we're running out of time, but um, I think we also judge our emotion mm. and we think, well, it has to be legitimate. That yeah. fear is not legitimate. Ooh, good. Ooh, or man, valid. Or valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We heard that this week in a session mm -hmm. and it's like, wait a minute, if that's what's firing in your brain, yeah. yep. that is what needs to be expressed. You don't have to say, well, it's not legitimate fear, mm -hmm. so I shouldn't yep. express it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an incident where I expressed guilt over buying mixed nuts, a container of mixed nuts. And Glenn was like, so fascinated by that. Like he 
leaned into it like guilt and question mark. And I'm like, well, yeah, we already had a, a container, but I didn't see the container. So now I spent money on buying another container. And he was so fascinated by that. And it's like, we had to process even that through mm. because it's like, Hey, that's what fired in my brain was right. guilt. Yeah. And he was so fa- like, really that mm. fired guilt. And, and so sometimes I think we even are fascinated. Like it doesn't make, it doesn't even have to make sense to the other person. Mm. There's no judgment on what you're experiencing. It's just, I'm learning to tune in and Glenn is fascinated by how many things I feel yeah. guilt over. He's like, well, I've never heard this. Mm. And it's like, well, I'm getting to know myself, even though right. we've been together yeah. 44 years, I am getting to know myself and I'm just expressing now, wow, that mm. hit me as guilt. So there's not even a judgment to be made on it. You're just right. tuning in. Mm. And sometimes you go, well, what was that message? And really when you speak it and you say it, you're like, I think it's okay that I bought two contain now that we have two containers mm. in the house of nuts. Mm. That doesn't even mean that there's a bad, that there's a judgment that says, don't do that again. Mm. It's just tuning in. It's like yeah. fascination. Mm. I'm curious. I'm fascinated. Yeah. I want to understand myself. And it is fascinating that I felt guilt over that, but I did. And so I expressed it. And I think that we have misunderstood some of that, that we judge mm. our own emotion or we judge the other person's yeah. emotion yeah. instead of realizing in all of this with the core, with the connection codes and even with using the core emotion wheel is we are trying to learn to tune mm. into ourselves yeah. and get to know ourselves better and to verbalize it, to actually get it out. Right. So we're not storing it and, and stuffing it yeah. deep into our gut. Yeah. Yeah. And you had mentioned the gut. I just had to say, um, you know, the limbic system is kind of the central command center for emotions, but emotions actually run throughout the body. You know, you know the vagus uh, nerve connects the brain to the gut. And a lot of times in psychology, we reference the gut as the second brain. Uh, we'll have to do a separate podcast on that because it is amazing. And anytime you feel something in your body, tune in and go, oh, what just happened for me there? What am I missing? Because your body is reacting to something and you figure out the emotion of it, figure out the message of the emotion, and you'll be better off uh, tuning into that. Absolutely. And also with this, now recognizing that no emotions are bad. Mm, emotions right. are not good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. Now you can stop feeling guilty for having emotion yeah. because what is happening to you is not good or bad. It just is. Mm -hmm. And often we feel guilt mm. for even having right. the emotion to begin with. Yeah. So yeah. free yourself from that. Wow. All right. Let's do the wheel. I'll okay. go first. Great. Feeling tons of joy about <laughs> uh, getting to be with all the kids this weekend mm. and, and uh, seeing all of them is just going to be super fun. Mm. Uh, definitely felt um, sad this week in a session where there was so much wounding mm. between uh, the, the husband and the wife and uh, just felt some fear in where their relationship mm. is going. And then even in that, I felt some guilt that we need to be clear yeah. um, with, with directing a couple right. um, yeah. and even felt some shame in that, that we have uh, with this particular couple, they, they've really not, embraced mm. the connection codes yeah. like in in as far as doing the wheel every day and i and i realize that we need to kind of make things clear like if you're if you want to make change mm. you got to do the work you got to lean into this mm. so felt some guilt and shame and just how i don't believe we've made it clear mm. and emphatic wow. with couples that we work in and then just a lot of anger when i see the wounding mm. that people do to each other in their marriages and then just to watch the trauma in all of that and whoa 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 we need we need help we need tools we need to get the connection codes message out so people yeah. have the tools where they can make a difference with each other um i i loneliness is it kind of creeps up every once in a while for me in just uh i think in friendships where um you know i think people assume i'm super busy mm. and so i think people don't want to bother me because i'm busy and then i just sit in loneliness mm. at times thinking that um i'm disconnected from my friends mm. and I, I i want to uh to really um, make some effort just to see um, friends more often. Mm. 
All right. Did I cover them all? Hurt. I don't think I mentioned hurt. Mm. Um, hurt. I think that, um, and I, you know, I shared this with you just the other day when I mentioned a, a guilt and you um, mm. acted surprised right. yeah, and, yeah. and kind of questioned it. And I did tell you later that I felt hurt in that, that um, I need you to umi even when my guilt right. seems confusing yeah. to you yeah. and surprising. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I felt some guilt uh, in that myself because I didn't follow your mm, uh, energy. Yeah. Uh, I just missed that with you. I was just so surprised that mm. um, I just really missed that with you. Uh, and I, in general, I, I feel shame whenever I miss fundamental mm. connection codes protocols. <laughs> and occasionally you'll remind me about those connection codes things. And I'm mm. like, don't pull that on me. That's mm. like babble. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I do. It's amazing to me. I've been doing this. You know, we're the founders of the Connection Codes. We've been doing it for years, but there's sometimes I just completely mm. uh, miss uh, that. Uh, and I feel anger in that at times because I'm like, dang, I wish I'd learned this when I was in my teens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable to think, wow, what could we do as individuals, mm -hmm. as a couple? Uh, what could have been? Of course, there's no way to know that, but, mm -hmm. you know, we definitely are driven to get this out uh, to the entire world because yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a desperate uh, situation. Uh, there's some loneliness in that uh, at times, as always, because it's a big task. Yeah. And uh, I forget how many decimal points we're at, but we're at point zero zero something percent of the world's population. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're old, so we have to hurry up and uh, get this done. Um, there was sadness. Uh, yesterday we talked to a guy that I uh, feel like has an opportunity to really help us, and he just didn't seem real interested. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a little bit of hurt in that, too. I was yeah. like, dang, dude. This is a big opportunity, which he acknowledges it's an incredible opportunity, but he just didn't seem interested in being yeah, bothered yeah. Uh, with it. Uh, there's fear for me um, often that, mm. you know, we're up to the task. There's just so much to do. We miss stuff. Uh, I feel like we mm. probably miss more and more stuff because there's more and more stuff coming at us. Uh, yeah. You know, you uh, probably three times this week have said, oh, here's some emails we didn't even <laughs> stop and read. Yeah. And there's fear that mm. we're missing stuff. Uh, so much joy getting to partner with you, but also because we're going on a road trip together next week. Put mm -hmm. me in a car with you for nine hours straight. Is, uh, <laughs> that is paradise. Yes. Uh, and we're going to go to a really cool place. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. A lot of joy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you found a little bit of freedom mm -hmm. in moving forward and just listening to yourself and identifying mm -hmm. how your emotions are trying to guide you mm -hmm. and that by actually revisiting them to process them helps you mm -hmm. through it. Um, it's actually the avoidance of them that yeah. further hurts you. And mm -hmm. so we go into that with episode three and four of this mm -hmm. podcast. If you've not listened to those yet, I highly recommend listening to episode three and four on how stored up and unprocessed emotion affects your body. Yeah. Um, so if you've not shared yet with your friends, your family, please do so and leave us that five star mm -hmm. review. It please. helps us so much get this word out. So yeah. because you need this, you deserve this. So let's, let's do, do this. this. Let's do this. Let's do this.